Mr. Robert Matana Kumede, the chief executive uh, or the executive chairman of Guma Group, a group of companies has graced this occasion. Robert Matana Kumede is the executive chairman of the Guma Group of Companies, whose worldwide black-owned conglomerate business activities include ICT, some of you would know, Gijima, infrastructure development, electricity generation, real estate and retail development, and human capital training. He is a strategist, salesman, and a successful entrepreneur with operations in various countries of the world, such as the United Kingdom, Brazil, USA, Canada, Australia, England, Spain, Turkey, Chile, or Chile, Indonesia, Caribbean, the Middle East, and Africa. Robert understands the need for sustainable jobs, economic development, and the generation of a much needed foreign currency to spearhead regional intertrade inter -trade in Africa. He is a philanthropist who gives generously annually to the needy project and people through his Robert Gumeda family, Kenny Foundation. So me and you are quite privileged tonight, All right? Quite privileged. So please help me, let me, help me welcome Mr. Robert Gumeda to speak to us. This evening. Good evening. Ladies and gentlemen, greetings to the leadership of Regenesis. I feel very much at home because I was thinking back in this hall that we are sitting in, I ran my business from 1996 to the year 2000. At the time, um, Mark Lambetti will understand and remember that uh, it was punching above one's weight because it was on the dawn of just after the new South Africa was born. Chepesen Marco, Sarah Vaja, the founding directors, entrepreneurs, leaders in business, Dr. Penny Law, and Master of Ceremony, Mr. William Vivian, the graceful lady, Miss Brownlee, the Regenesis team, lecturers, special guests, graduates, and those of you who are with parents or your families here, we are most welcome and I feel honored to have an opportunity to talk to you tonight. Thank you for inviting me to this momentous occasion where education transcends all boundaries. Tonight, I want to capture your brains rather than state capture. <laughs> if I had more time, I would have been very happy to have a conversation with you, which I think is very critical, but not a Sipo Pijane moment but about which country and the world we are graduating in. A laughing stock or a disappointment, disappointing leadership in our country. Fees must fall campaign. The courts, public protector versus government and whose side is government and whose side is the criminal justice. In the midst of the economic meltdown, our government keeps scoring own goals with impunity. When America had their 9-11, last year we had our own 9-12 Nenegate, where over 500 billion took flight from our shores. Recently, our Minister of Finance, Pravin Godan, went on a roadshow accompanied by private sector leaders, which included my dear friend, Mark Lambetti, to the United Kingdom as well as the USA, to go and sell the 
South Africa that we have and talk about hope in order to avoid the dreading downgrade to junk status of our economy. You go back, the ANC wake up call, not heard by our leaders after the local government elections, not different from FIFA, Sepp Blatter. We move on on the hills of the roadshow to save our jobs and create jobs. We have our 1110. When we woke up in the morning and the Minister of Finance was charged. And here we are, few weeks or few days to go for an accused minister to present a mid-term budget for our country, Five, 50 billion rents later. If we had time, we'll be talking about the Gupta 6.7 billion flight from our shores. If you look at the world today, who would have thought that Donald Trump will have such impact and success in spite of his crazy ideas, demeaning of women, failure to pay taxes, questioning the first black American president bad rights and bad place, denying global warming. We'll be talking about the Syrian war, the return of the Cold War, where both America and Russia are pitted against each other. We'll be talking about North Korea with their nuclear program that they have been able to unleash in spite of United Nations resolutions. We'll be talking about Brexit. The United Kingdom withdrawing from the European Union trade block. We'll be talking about the gallant former Prime Minister, David Cameron, who led a campaign to stay within the European Union. But when he lost, he said the majority of the people have voted against the stance that he took of staying in the Union, like a true Democrat like someone who understands that he leads people not in the Conservative Party but in the United Kingdom, he decided to resign. All these issues, I believe, are important to you as graduates because you are leaders and you need to understand them. That in every day when I run my businesses, these issues impact my decision making. I cannot say it doesn't matter who is the president of America. I cannot say it doesn't matter what is happening in Syria because it has economic impact, not just the social political impact. We cannot ignore any one of them as the world is a global village as graduates, and in particular the class of 2016, you are graduating at a time when the world is on knife edge. You should take advantage of the situation. That is what leaders are expected to do. That is what entrepreneurs do. You should look at the world as it is unfolding and look at what you can do to add to the changing dynamics of the world. We know that tonight, all of you are dressed in black. All of you, you are mourning in terms of saying, I left behind the blind. I left behind the darkness. I am now going towards the bright side of life. And without education, we know that this country, 
this continent, this world, will be no different from what is happening in Syria. We hope that the Fees Must Fall campaign do not degenerate to a Syrian Aleppo situation. We also believe that through education, we can be able to transform society. Those of you who are graduating tonight, you have jobs, but you understood the importance of continuously bettering yourselves so that you can impact not just yourself, your family, but society at large in a positive manner. You can tell countries that are led not by educated people, but by people who went to learn and became educated. And the countries that don't have leadership, that has tested the classroom and tested lecture halls and continue to better themselves, you can tell the difference. So the step that you have taken demonstrate the importance of leaders to continuously equip themselves. It is institutions like Regenesis that are the engine that also get fuel in you in fueling the economies of countries. It is institutions like Regenesis and yourselves that brings in the change in the game, a game changer. You are indeed game changers yourself. I, it will be remiss of me and not to talk about myself because I believe in life just like you. You have to be ambitious. You must be hardworking. Think on your feet, punch above your weight, never say die Attitude must be embedded in you. Focus on niche opportunities or niche businesses and remain hands-on like me. Dream big. Today, the master of ceremony made reference to Gijima, the company that I founded. And it is indeed the only 100% black-owned IT company and the fourth largest in the African continent. Not only did I stop there, because I understood that to become successful, you have to diversify. Hence, before my friend Mark Lambetti took over and uh, changed the fortunes of Imperial, I bought a business from them for about two billion rand, and I've grown this business to multi-billion rands business with a turnover of over 6.5, slightly lower than what the Guptas took out of the country. <laughs> but I continue to pay taxes to our government because we understand it's important to where you make money, you pay taxes. We have diversified into energy, water, and sanitation because we understand that water is the new oil. Africa is endowed with a lot of water. Almost 15% of the land in Africa is covered in water. But something very fundamental is wrong. There's water everywhere, but no drop of water to drink. Because the water that people drink are infested with cholera virus. It is also an opportunity for you as leaders that are graduating to start broadening your horizon. I am an African and I believe in Africa because Africa has huge opportunities. We can all try to hunt here in South Africa and we'll be tripping one another. Yet, we have a continent of almost one billion people with infrastructure that has not been developed since the colonial days. We have a continent with a huge population that requires products and services. 
And that is why I had the foresight to say that I'm not going to focus on South Africa alone, but I'll chase the dollars. Because if we want to remain relevant as a business, you have to become global in your operations. We know and we see it every day how the Chinese have come into Africa and take anything unconditionally. The mining wealth, the oil is leaving the African continent with nothing in return except roads that are not properly constructed, buildings that are not properly built, that collapses before even they are paid back to the contractors coming from outside our continent. I have always said I'm going to focus in the African continent in countries with some wealth that they have not yet exploited, be it oil, mining, and tourism, because tourism is one of the biggest forex earners in the world. The beauty in dealing in Africa, as I said, is that you deal in American dollars. Today, Mark, we were talking together, he was telling me how successful he is in Nigeria, but he's not dealing in Naira, he's dealing in dollars. At one time, our rent, uh, exchange rate to a dollar was 17. You can just imagine the opportunities that you have. As we all know, Africa is an elephant, and it is indeed not for sissies. Sometimes it has political instability, falling economy, lack of infrastructure, corruption, but as an entrepreneur, you never shy away. You go in, fight your fight, make sure that you become successful so that you can help those countries to deliver to their people. In my business, I have one philosophy, that the best time to climb on the back of an elephant, it is when it is on its knees. So that when it rises, it rises with me on top. And that's what you do as an entrepreneur. You go where others they go. <laughs> and to you as graduates, we all know that the need for qualified and competent leaders in Africa, both in private sector and in public sector, is much greater. With your graduation tonight, Africa is gaining a new set of quality leaders that will command respect and not demand respect. You are indeed the Ubers in South Africa. As leaders, you have to become disruptors in our economy so that we can be able to transform and better the lives of our people. Again, congratulations to all of you, including the leaders of the institutions. Congrats to my friend, Mark, for being honored today or tonight. And it's been long coming. He deserves it. But very importantly, just like me, he comes from a rural town. And we, he came here as a gym, come to Joburg, and made a mark. And I'm trying to follow his footsteps. As we all know, that money is a disease, not only to politicians, but to all of us as human beings. But I always believe you should never let money define who you are, but use money to define a better tomorrow for yourself, your family, and the society. And very importantly, it is not easy to fly a plane solo. We must all understand that none of us is as good as all of us. I would like to thank Regenesis CEO, 
Ms. Brownlee for this invitation to, co to come and share this moment with you. Lastly and importantly, I would like to thank all of you and wish you the best of luck. I am not looking for employees, I'm looking for partners. Good night, thank you.